This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 543, The Incredible Power of Contentment, part two, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Tuesday, and welcome back to Optimal Living Daily. This is where I read to you from popular blogs to help you optimize your life, and that's every day, all free, of course. And today's post is a continuation from yesterday, part two in this three-part series. So if you're new here, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. Otherwise, you're gonna be hearing the middle of an article, I'll keep this intro nice and short for you, so let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. The Incredible Power of Contentment, Part 2, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. I was happy despite my conditions because I chose to be happy. I found contentment in what I already had instead of wishing I had something else, instead of being discontented with what I had. Contentment not only made me happy, but it transformed my life in many ways. Here's how. Happiness. This is perhaps the most obvious area affected on this list because many people see contentedness and happiness as one and the same. In many ways they are, but it's really a matter of focus. When you're happy, it's really a state of being influenced by a number of factors, including contentedness. Contentedness, on the other hand, is a matter of being satisfied with what you have. It focuses on what you have and don't have instead of just being a state of being. It influences happiness. However, you can choose to be content just as you can choose to be happy. And if you choose to be content, you will be happy. There are many ways to become happy. You can become happy by doing certain things, running, getting into flow. You can become happy because you are loved or in love. You can become happy because you just won a competition or a million dollars. Being content is just one way to be happy, but it's a great way. Simplicity. Simplicity, of course, means many things to many people, but for me, contentedness is at the core of simplicity. It's about being content with less, with a simpler life, rather than always wanting more, always acquiring more, and never being content. Simplicity means examining why you want more and solving that issue at its root. At the root of wanting more is not being content with what you have. Once you've learned to be content, you don't need more. You can stop acquiring and start enjoying. Now, I won't claim to never want stuff. I wanted a MacBook Air, and I got it. It's helping me to write this post and this book right now. However, in my defense, I waited more than a month before buying it to make sure I needed it. But while I'm not immune to wants, I have learned to catch myself now and then and to examine why I want something. And then I try to tell myself that I already have everything I could possibly want and need. And that contentedness leads to simplicity. Finances. Really, this is the same as simplicity, but I wanted to show it from a financial angle. The reason we get into financial trouble oftentimes is that we buy more than we can afford. And the root of that buying is buying things we want instead of only things we need. And the root of that is not being content with what we already have. Finding contentment with the stuff you have and with a simpler life can lead to buying less, to buying things we need instead of want, and to only spending what we can afford. I know this firsthand as uncontrolled spending led to debt for me and contentedness led to me getting out of debt. Relationships. Many times it seems that we're never satisfied with our significant others. They don't behave how we want them to. That's often at the root of relationship problems as many headed as those problems may seem. Instead, learn to be content with the person you love just as they are. This isn't always easy as we are usually trained by our well-intentioned but never satisfied parents and others around us to do just the opposite, to try to change people. However, you will only find trouble if you try to change your significant other. You might get them to change their behavior, but most often not, but they will be unhappy and in turn, the relationship will suffer. I will admit to having a problem with this at times, but when this happens, I try to remind myself to love my partner as she is for who she is. She's a beautiful person just as she is now and there's absolutely no need to change her. This has always led to a better relationship for me. Kids. As mentioned, parents are often not satisfied with their children. They need to be cleaner, better behaved, better in school, more organized and studious, more courteous and kind and compassionate, better groomed and better at sports. Well, that leads to the relationship problems mentioned earlier, later in the kids' lives as they have learned to never be satisfied with others and to try to change them. It also leads to inferiority complexes in our children, in unhappiness, and in bad relationships with them. Instead, we should learn to love our children unconditionally, to accept them for the people they are, and to let them know this through not only our words, but our actions. Accept children for who they are, and they will be happier, and so will you. Jobs. 
Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part two of the post titled The Incredible Power of Contentment by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. If you enjoy this podcast and if it adds value to your life, if you want to send value back, you can. I recently set up a Patreon page. You can check that out at oldpodcast.com slash help and that'll get you ad-free versions of this podcast too. And I'll keep this ending nice and minimal for you. I hope you're having a great day. I'll be back tomorrow to finish up this post. So stay tuned for that where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.